Heartbreaking, intimate and often frustrating, the BBC's Normal People is one of TV's most realistic depictions of the trials and tribulations of a first major relationship. The audience follows Connell and Marianne through their adolescence and into their adulthood, and all the confused emotions which accompany this period of life, as the viewer painstakingly follows a couple who inherently seem to sabotage their own happiness at every turn. Although a simple story, so much can be said about the show's ability to make the audience feel the characters' times of isolation, affinity and claustrophobia. Largely, this can be accredited to the beautiful cinematography and the ways in which the camera work and musical score can be used to heighten emotion. One of the most impressive things about Normal People is how it displays the couple's intimacy despite Connell's inability to express himself. You know, I, I did used to think that I could read your mind at times. As the show is based on Sally Rooney's novel of the same name, the series had to convert Connell's inner monologues, which outline how he has the typical male trait of not feeling comfortable confiding in others, to suit the medium of television. I assume this would be achieved using a monologue, such as in shows like Peep Show or Mr. Robot. But Normal People is able to portray stoicism in a manner which is much more poignant. Instead of monologues, Normal People gives us access to the character's thoughts through its cinematography, often using close-ups so that the audience must interpret scenes through the most subtle of glances, stares and changes in the character's facial expressions. Often Connell's emotion is shown as Marianne looks away, and so the audience is frustratingly given insight into the affection that he cannot express and which Marianne cannot see. Whilst this technique highlights Meskel's and Edgar Jones' stellar performances, the close-ups also work to highlight each of the characters' imperfections and portrays their beauty as unique. As the audience has been encouraged to analyse every aspect of the character's expression, these extreme close-ups paired with POV shots give access to the extremely personal attraction this couple has for one another. What stands out most in the series, therefore, is its ability to convey Marianne and Connell's intimacy as unique. The pairing of these close-ups with the use of shallow depth of field and a short focal lens works to blur portions of the frame, and it highlights how Connell and Marianne's focus is solely on one another. A shallow depth of field is a technique deployed to guide the viewer's eye, and so these shots work particularly well in conveying Connell and Marianne's unique connection and how, despite their other relationships, they only really have eyes for one another. This sentiment is most overtly conveyed in a scene in which Connell spots Marianne for the first time at Trinity College. Whilst Rooney's novel outlines how even just the first glance shows everything is fine between them, like they live in a slightly different universe, the series uses the aforementioned techniques to blur their surroundings and focus their line of sight, as the connection causes the characters, props and the world around them to dissolve. Moreover, throughout the show, despite being shown in separate shots, the character's eye line always remains level. This imagery is directly contrasted by the problematic relationships, particularly Marianne, have outside the story's central romance. Her relationship with Gareth does not use this technique when filming from Marianne's perspective, as she does not feel the same connection. As such, the cinematography does not guide her eye to anything, and the audience is free to look at anything within the frame. As a contrast to how Marianne's POV forced the audience to look directly at Connell, we are invited to look beyond Gareth and explore other aspects of the set design. Connell and Marianne, therefore, throughout the series, appear to live in their own little world separate from the side characters. This is depicted not only through the aforementioned techniques, but through the inventive framing of some of the shots. Often, Connell and Marianne are framed within the frame, with mirrors, doorways and windows creating a shared environment separate from the outside world. Whilst this technique infers the young couple's connection, it also works to portray the claustrophobia of the relationship. It'd be awkward in school if something happened with us. This is a theme which runs throughout the plotline of Rooney's novel, which states all these years they've been like two little plants sharing the same part of soil, growing around one another, contorting to make room, taking certain and lightly positions. The framing means, just as the couple have shared their own hometown and college, the characters must share the same portions of an expansive shot, depicting Rooney's descriptions of the unbearably intense portions of the relationship into filmic form. Similarly to how the extreme close-up portrays an intimate connection, the use of a wider lens and distance between the characters works to highlight the couple's disconnect during the relationship's turmoil. Often Marianne and Connell are separated by visual barriers, as well as space. When Connell and Marianne distance themselves from each other, the audience is similarly excluded, as the couple are filmed from afar in their moments of isolation. The characters are often shown studying in sparsely populated rooms. The audience is therefore reminded how university is actually full of people, and so Connell and Marianne's loneliness comes from feeling misunderstood rather than physical separation. Therefore, just as the viewer has been encouraged to become close to these characters, the cinematography forces us to take a step back and emphasise how lonely depression can make someone feel, even when other people are present. The use of wider shots and cluttered mise-en-scene works to put up barriers between the characters and the emotions the audience were previously given access to. The cinematography therefore works to create this sort of unspoken narrative of loneliness and depression and it slowly builds and culminates into one of the best scenes I've ever seen acted out. <laughs> I left currently thinking I could have a different life. I hate it here.
man. I can never go back. These periods of loneliness, which makes me glad they altered the ending. In the novel, the couple sit on opposite sides of the room, with Marianne not really looking at Connell, methodically brushing her hair. The end of the series is a lot more positive. The use of natural lighting gives each of the characters an angelic quality and represents the armor in which they view one another. As the series has invited its viewers to experience the relationship through its intimate camera work, I believe this ending to be much more befitting for Connell and Marianne's story. Whilst their goodbye is quite understated, we, the audience, are given the satisfaction of knowing these characters got the chance to properly say goodbye and that Connell was finally able to express himself. Overall, I think Normal People deserves all its plaudits. Normal People was also very culturally significant coming out in lockdown. In a period of history where intimacy and connection wasn't really an option for a lot of people, this series, through its cinematography, extraordinary acting and great music, did an amazing job of bonding its audience to a set of characters and making them truly care about a relationship. My final score is 9 out of 10. Down by the river, by the boat, where everybody goes to be alone. Where you won't see any rising sun Down to the river we will run When by the water we drink to the trays Look at the stones on